Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome to the new lecture of this course again, Properties of Materials. So let us just briefly recap what we were doing in the last lecture. So in the last lecture we looked at uh, the definitions of normal stress which could be sigma xx, sigma yy, sigma zz or we can have shear stress which is sigma xy, sigma um, xz, sigma yz and this could be also yx, zx and zy and these are generally referred as tau ij instead of sigma and by definition normal stress is basically the stress which is arising from a force that acts perpendicular to an area and uh, shear stress is because of uh, force that acts along let us say in this case j direction, j direction and uh, the, the acting on a and it acts on a plane which is uh, which is normal to i direction. Okay. So, this is what is the definition of tau ij and we also did uh, start we, we did a brief uh, example of stress evaluation along different set of axes and, uh, and then we also looked at the sign uh, convention. By the way, uh, just I forgot to tell you that uh, you can read all this from a book title is so book reference it is a very good book mechanical behavior of materials by W F Hosford of Cambridge University Press. So, this is a very good book if you can get this uh, all of this will be available in, in, in this book, particular book. All right. So, at the end we were doing uh, we were trying to do the transformation of axis in, uh, in a general sense. And uh, so, basically we said that we have uh, we start with this coordinate system which is let us say x, y and z and we want to transform to x prime, y prime and z prime which is a new uh, system which is at certain angle to the original ones. So, essentially let us say we define them as one set of the first set of uh, orthogonal axis as i j k and then we have second set of orthogonal axis that can be defined as m n and p. So, by using uh, so this the stresses in a new system in general can be defined as so it stresses uh, can now be expressed as sigma ij is equal to n is equal to 1 to 3 summation over n is equal to 1 to 3 m is equal to 1 to 3 this will be L i m 
L j n and sigma m n. So, the n is here summed over 1 to 3, the m is summed over 1 to 3 and of course, i j vary from uh, 1 to 3, but at one time you can take only 2 of them. So, i j k can vary from 1 to 3 and m n p can also vary from 1 to 2 to 3. Okay. So, here what is now this is basically because of matrix transform because the tensors are matrix properties. So, essentially uh, we are using the characteristics of matrix and L m n here is defined as cosine of angle between let us say i and m axis. Similarly, L j n here would be the cosine of angle between m and n axis. Okay. So, in a general form you can get rid of the summation symbol which means it is implied or it is assumed that it is there. So, in a general manner you can write this as sigma i j is equal to L i m into L of j n into sigma m n. So, which means here the summation over m n n is assumed. Okay, it is by default there. So, let us say you want to transform the stress from the stress from let us say x y z to x prime y prime z prime okay, the new system. So, let us say let us first begin with x prime x prime. Okay. So, sigma x prime x prime can be written as L of x prime x into again L of x prime x into sigma x x okay. and then this becomes now the second term will become L of x prime y L of x prime x into sigma y x. So, we can see that we are varying this is, this was x prime here x. So, we are varying the x here to x to y and this x corresponds to this x. So, this was x earlier it becomes y sorry uh, sorry y x not y z hang on y x okay, because it was sigma m n. Okay. So, we are varying at the first in the first row we are varying m and then the second term becomes L, third term becomes L x prime z L x prime x sigma z x. So, we can see that we have vary only one term that is the m term. So, m term has changed from x to y to z. Similarly, stress also this was sigma m n. So, it has become sigma x x, sigma y x and sigma z x. Now, let us look at the other term. So, now we will vary n. So, in the first case n was equal to x, x prime. Now, the n will become equal to uh, y. So, the first term remains x prime x. So, this x prime will be this this x will now become y okay and here sigma will become sigma x y this will become sigma x prime y this will become sigma l sorry l x prime y so now you can see it's varying vertically and this will become sigma y y third term will be L x prime z 
L x prime y into sigma z y. Coming third third row, third row will be x prime x L x prime z. So, you can see that x has gone from and this similarly here it will become sigma x z again L x prime y L x prime z sigma y z sig L x prime z L x prime z into sigma z z. So, you can see that in this case this digit has changed. In the first case it was the the first digit. So, this changed from here to here from here to here. Similarly, um, in this case this particular digit this particular digit and this particular digit. So, in the first row we vary uh, m and the second uh, row wise we vary m and the column y we vary n. Okay. So, this is what the general expression for the stress will be. You can also write let us say sigma x prime y prime. All right. So, what will sigma x prime y prime will be? This will be sigma L x prime x L y prime x sigma x x plus L x prime y okay. L y prime x sigma y x plus L x prime z L y prime x sigma y sorry z z x plus we can write L x prime x L y prime y sigma x y plus L x prime y L y prime y sigma y y plus L x prime z L y prime uh, y sorry y sigma z y plus L x prime x L y prime z sigma x z plus L x prime y L y prime z sigma y z plus L x prime z L y prime z into sigma z z. Now, of course, so these are the two expressions. Similarly, you can write other expressions as well. Now, by symmetry we know we know that sigma i j is equal to sigma j i and this i is not equal to j. Okay. So, if we apply this and we write sigma i i as sigma i. So, we can write this as sigma x prime which is nothing but sigma x prime x prime is equal to L of x prime x square into sigma x plus L of x prime y square into sigma y into L of x prime z square sigma z plus 2 of L x prime y. So, basically we can write this as tau i j or tau j i. So, we will introduce this tau x uh, y z plus 2 L x prime z L of x prime x z L per, sorry just one second 
L of x prime uh, z just one second x prime x into tau of z x and plus 2 of L of x prime x into L of x prime y to tau of x y. And this you can do yourself as a, as a home exercise, it is a, it's a little bit tedious, but not complicated. So, it just needs to be done and similarly you can write the expression for this. So, L of x prime x, L of y prime x sigma x x plus L of x prime y, L of y prime y sigma y y plus L of x prime z, y prime z sigma 3 3. So, first three principal components and then we write the shear components. So, this will be first one L of x prime y plus into L of y prime z plus L of x prime z l of y prime y into tau y z l of x prime y plus l of x prime z y prime y yeah and then second one will be l of x prime z y prime z plus l of x prime x y prime z into tau z x and the third term will be L of x prime x, L of y prime y plus L of x prime y, L of y prime x into tau x y. So, these are the, the stress components that we write um, by doing the transformation. So, if you go back to the previous slide, essentially the transform is this, this is the formula, all right. So, essentially you can calculate any stress, it could be i j. So, in it could be i j, it could be. So, essentially if you take, you can calculate sigma 1 1, you can calculate sigma 2 2, you can calculate sigma 2 3 and uh, so on and so forth, uh, sigma 3 3 and 1 2, sigma 2 3 and sigma 3 1. All of these can be calculated in the new system. So, let us say in the new system it becomes 1 prime 1 prime and that original system it was, so the, 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 the transforms could be sigma 1 prime 1 prime, it could be 2 prime 2 prime, 3 prime 3 prime, 1 prime 2 prime, 2 prime 3 prime and 3 prime 1 prime. So, you it could be any of them and you can calculate just by using this formula, where your original one system is i j k, second system is uh, m n uh, p and you can transform between the two the way you like using this formula which is fairly which is a bit tedious to write but it is fairly straightforward you just have to vary in one row you vary let us say m and the column so in rows you vary m and the columns you vary n and the i j remains same as what you write on the left okay so if you suggest as a home exercise i mean you can you can you can write the expressions for let us say sigma 1 prime 1 prime. What will this be in terms of uh, original system? Similarly, you can write try writing expression for sigma 2 prime 3 prime. What will this be in terms of? So, you can see that for example, when you write this. Uh, so, let us let us just do a simple. So, we say that the formula is uh, sigma i j is equal to n is equal to 1 to 3 sigma m is equal to 1 to 3 l i m l j n and sigma m n. Let us say I want to calculate what is sigma 1 prime 2 prime. So, if I write this as an expression, so let us say the first one it remains n to 3. So, I fix certain things here sigma 1 prime m sorry not sigma l l 1 prime m 
the second one becomes L 2 prime n then this becomes sigma m n. So, I am only now left to vary m and n. First we vary along the uh, row. Okay. So, the first term will become L 1 prime 1 L 2 prime 1 sigma 1 1. Now, we vary L of 1 prime 2 L of 2 prime 1 main this one this will become 2 1 and this will go 1 prime 3 L 2 prime 1 sigma 3 1 all right this this fine. Now, you come to this will remain sigma 1 prime 1 this will be sigma 2 prime 2 this will be sigma 1 2. Now, you again go this way. So, this will now you are changing L 1 prime 2 L 2 prime 2 and this will become sigma 2 2 and this will now you are this is sigma 1 prime 3 L 2 prime 2 and this is sigma uh, uh, sigma 3 2 this will remain 1 prime 1 this will become 2 prime 3 this will become sigma 1 3 this will remain 1 prime 2 this will remain 2.3 this will become 2 3 and this will remain L 1 point 1 prime 3 this will become uh, 2 prime 3 and this will become sigma 3 3. So, this is what will be the new stress tensor. So, of course, you can replace since these are all these can be replaced by um, tau's. So, you can replace So, this is how you write the stress tensor for various of these stresses. So, if you now apply this to apply this to problem done earlier. Okay. So, now if we if we apply this to the problem that we did earlier we draw the same box so we made a plane which was like this okay so this was let's say ay prime this was f y prime this was f y and this was a y okay this was x this was x prime and of course y and y prime are listed there and this angle was basically you can say theta so now if i go by the same logic that i have applied here this sigma y prime will become l y prime y square into sigma y y so basically sigma y y prime right and if you do the maths basically l y prime y is the cosine of angle between y and y prime so this is basically sigma y into cos square theta similarly if you want to calculate what is tau of x prime y prime this becomes tau of l, l of x x prime y l of y prime y into sigma y y other terms are 0. Okay. So, if you just calculate this, this will become sigma y L of x prime y and L of y prime y is. So, this is sin theta, this is cos theta. So, this is same result that we get what we got from earlier exercise that we did. So, what essentially we have done in this so far is we have written a general equation through which you can transform the you can you can estimate the stresses along different axis coordinate system by using this transform this is nothing but from matrix characteristics and uh, we tried doing this for let us say two principal principal and shear stresses that is sigma x prime and sigma x prime y prime 
and then we did a general case for and you can then apply the symmetry properties which makes sigma i j being equal to sigma j i and then simplify these above equations and then we did finally one exercise for hypothetical case of sigma 1 prime 2 prime and again you can simplify this further by making these equal. So, these will become equal, uh, these will become equal and these will become equal. So, as a result you can simplify this equation and uh, so essentially that is what uh, we have done in this lecture. Now, finally and finally what we did was we applied the same transform to the problem that we did earlier manually and if you apply the transform you come up with the same result. So, it basically validates that what we did earlier was uh, was correct. Okay. So, now let us move further and define some more things. So, we define what we call as principal stresses. Okay. So, in principal stresses generally if you define axes as 1, 2 and 3 then these are called as principal stress axes and the principal stresses will be sigma 1 correspondingly sigma 2 sigma 3. If 1, 2, 3 are principal stress axes the stresses along these are called as principal stresses. So, based on the characteristics of these stresses one can define an equation that sigma p cube minus i 1 sigma p square minus i 2 sigma p minus i 3 is equal to 0. So, this is a relation which basically defines the principal stresses and this p subscript is essentially about the pressure okay. and here i's are i 1, i 2 and i 3 are called as stress invariants these invariants remain uh, independent of of axis transformation and one can write this i as i 1 as sigma x x sigma y y plus sigma z z i 2 can be written as sigma y z square plus sigma z x square plus sigma x y square you can write them tau x y tau uh, s 1 is and this becomes next one is sigma y y minus of sigma y y sigma z z. Then we have sigma z z sigma x x and then we have minus of sigma x x sigma y y. So, or you can write them as tau y z square plus tau z x square plus tau x y square minus sigma y sigma z minus sigma z minus sigma x minus sigma y. So, this becomes sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z. Similarly, we can write I 3 which is sigma x sigma y sigma z plus 2 of tau y z tau z x into tau x y minus of sigma x tau y z square minus of sigma y into tau z x square minus of sigma z into tau x y square. So, we will stop here what we have done is basically we have looked at transformation of stresses from one set of axis to another set of axis using a simple formalism do that exercise at home and uh, it is a bit tedious, but it is simple and once you get the habit of doing it you will be all right with uh, how to do it. So, we will stop here, we will we'll we'll, we'll take up this principal stress formalism further and do a problem to understand what it is. Okay? Thank you very much.